Ah, welcome to another look at another piece of electronics. Um, thanks for uh, all the views on my channel. It seems to be going quite well, really. I wasn't really... Ex I know I'm doing some weird and wonderful electronic uh, stuff, but I have got a Mega Drive to repair, which I will do in a later video. Um, today, we are going to look at Ubiquiti, um, Ubiquiti equipment. Now, if you're not familiar with this, well, I'm not sure why you found the video, but... This essentially is a device that can... Uh, this particular device is what is known as a Wi-Fi bridge. Um, this particular model is a NanoStation Loco M5, indoor-outdoor Air Max, blah, blah, blah. Essentially, hopefully you, you've come to this video because you know what this is for. This is used to... Uh, maybe you use it as a bridge, a wireless bridge, where you can't run a cable maybe between two separate buildings that belong to the same company or across a field or to an external building in your house. So if you had like a an office shed um, at the rear of your garden, summer room, and you wanted Wi-Fi or internet in there, you can use this and you have two of them. You put one in your house or one on the outside of your house and one on the building you want the connection to. You point them at each other like a satellite and... Um, and that's it. It create creates a connection without the need of putting wires in. They're about a hundred pound, um, one hundred and fifty for two, roughly. This one does. Oh, it's quite a long distance, you know, up to a kilometer in clear air. But um, yeah, they are. They come in all shapes and sizes. And what's happened to this device is they run on twenty four volts. Um, someone who was very stupid, um, namely me, put. 40, a 48 volt power pack on it um it can be a little bit confusing because these types of devices which run off uh, a power over ethernet system uh, some will take both voltages the 24 48 whatever and some will only take one essentially what happens what i've looked at online is there's a tiny little chip a little diode which i've already removed from this device which is that there you can see it. Um, and all you need to do is remove that. If you've overpowered yours, if you've, and, it, and it's not powering up correctly, you remove that from the board and replace it. And it should fire back into life. This is a, like a transient voltage diode, I think you'd call it. Um, it will resist up to, for some reason, they put one in that will only resist up to f like 35 volts. Um, so it does two jobs. It stops you destroying the circuit board inside if you do accidentally put the voltage in and also it smooths out the voltage if you've got a bit of a a, a supply that's not particularly well regulated um yeah so what i'm going to do is show you how to change these chips or where to change these chips and this actually works for both these nano beam devices and various other ubiquity devices um such as the internal AP, Unify AP systems that a lot of offices and that has. They sort of look like a round dish. Uh, I'll maybe flash some pictures up on the screen. They've all got the same sort of protection system in it, just that little diode. So all we need to do is open this up, change the chip, and away we go. Um, I've had to order the chips from China, which have not arrived. So I'm just going to show you how and where. If you've got some basic soldering skills, you're going to be able to get this thing back online. So the symptoms, when this thing is normally in operation, you will see the power light here come on and LAN 1 if they got a data connection. These four lights show you the strength of signal. So when you're setting this up, you turn it until you get the strongest signal pointing at the other device. But as I said, this video is not about setting these up. It's just about repairing the over voltage issue, which I've seen piles of these on eBay sold as broken. And that's normally what the problem is. So I've already had this one apart, so it should be nice and easy. Take the lower case off just by the little button underneath. The one that always gets me, you've got to take the label off. And there's a screw inside there, which is a tiny little black screw, which you just unscrew from there. And then you're ready to take it apart. And of course, we need the classic, we actually, a podger or... Um, <laughs> Or, or removing device doesn't work for this what you've got to do you see these two slots you just need to 
get in under there, basically, and lift this up. You might need, and you'll see, there's two little nipples here that are trapping it in. So you can either push up from the dot, but I find it easier to lift it up from there. Okay, and once you've lifted it up, circuit board slides out. Of course, if you're familiar with these, that is essentially the antenna and the business end is on this side. LEDs across the top there. And the chip that we need to remove, if I can get it close enough to the camera, is would normally sit there. Oh, it's in the shadow. Let's see if we can get it in the light. So it's this one here. Nice big. I would say it's about eight millimeters by six millimeters. Um, so if you're having the symptoms, like I explained, that the power light isn't coming on, and the chances are you change this chip. Sorry, my main light went off. Change this chip and you'll be good to go. They're available for a few pence on eBay. But what will happen once you, you see, you just desolder these points. And once you've got that off, you should be able to power it up as long as you know you've got a stable voltage supply it, for this particular device, 24 volts, 24 volts. Um, it will start up. It's just you're losing this protection here. Hence the reason we will put one of these back in. Anyway, so this is, like I said, for loads of different Ubiquiti devices, solder the new one in, make sure it is a diode, so it needs to go around the right way. Um very easy to do just be quite gentle because it is a very small board so lots of heat very quickly i would say and lift it off with caution otherwise you'll break your tracks once you've got that off and you've replaced it with a new one the other thing that i should say i think it's worth checking i think this has an internal fuse uh or maybe no maybe it doesn't no it just uses this diode this model some models have a little fuse there as well which i would check just to make sure they haven't blown as well but this little transient voltage diode solder a new one in i'll put the numbers in the comments they're the ones that you need to order in the comparative products like i said got them from china off ebay solder that in oh <laughs> pop it back in its case really simple the only annoying thing i found is you've got to align it with this little plastic tracks inside let's see if you can see them no, you can't really see them. Just got to make sure the board sits on the little plastic supports, otherwise it points down slightly, and then it won't go in. So once you've got it there, bang, you're done. Really simple. Bang your screw back in, plug your 24 volts back in. I really wish that they would print 24 volts on there, because when you're using a large PoE network, you can have you know, several different voltages, and these devices... Like I said, a weird type of protection, really. It's like they almost want it to fail if you make a mistake. Um, yeah, the Ubiquiti Nano Beam. Um, I'm not sure they sell this shape anymore. They might do. But obviously, there's a round version of this, which is made for access point bridging. And then there is, essentially, if I flash up an image of the round AP units you would use internally, um, hopefully, you can save yourself 50 to 100 quid for the price of a tiny little 50 pence diode. Oh, this helps someone. Thanks for watching. When I find something. Oh yeah, my next thing is I've got a Mega Drive with no video output, which I will be looking at. Never done one of those before. I just brought it as a little project to mess around with, really. If you've got any questions, ask them in the comments and uh, let's see how we go. Thanks for watching my little video. Bye.